Welcome back in morning sports. Our San Antonio Spurs have just 18 games left in the regular season. If there's going to be a playoff push, now is the time. That's because they've now managed to put three and a half games between themselves and the New Orleans Pelicans, who own the 10th and play in position in the Western Conference. At the same time, keep Greg Popovich still two games out of making NBA history. It's after the Spurs suffered their fourth straight loss in Charlotte Saturday night. Still have yet to win since completing their eight-game rodeo road trip. Just, you know, the end of quarters are still a learning situation for us. You know, the end of the third quarter, we were up six. And then about a minute and a half, we were down one. Uh, and the same thing at the end of the game. So uh, for young group, uh, that's the... The knowledge we got to take in and the understanding of how solid you have to be during those situations. Up next, Spurs are home and will finally be home for a while. They're taking on the Lakers tonight at 730. Lakers have won three of their last 10 games and LeBron is carrying them right now. Then on Wednesday, excuse me, the Spurs are welcome to the Raptors to the AT&T Center. Jazz are in town Friday. Follow the Pacers uh, on Saturday. Start of the United Soccer League regular season is here. San Antonio FC has been busy preparing and there are a lot of new faces on the team. Gone is Central Catholic alum and star Jose Gallegos, who's off playing in Denmark with a new club. One familiar face that is back is 28-year-old goalkeeper Matt Cardone. He's been with the team since 2016, is the club leader in games played, minutes played, clean sheets and saves. Now it's all about taking that next step. It's after the team lost in a penalty kick shootout in the Western Conference Finals back in 2021. It's a whole new season. Uh, teams look different. Our team has different players. Uh, it's a difficult league and it's going to be a very long season. Um, so just kind of like what we did last season, that, that we got to break it down and take it game by game because that's, that's what gave us success last season. We've set a very high bar for ourselves, um, but we also understand it's a process. And we have to commit to the process, that day-to-day -day grind. And if we do so, we potentially put ourselves in a good position to uh, continue to progress and, and be in playoffs for a third straight year. The team also revealed new jersey kits for the season last week. And Saturday's home opener is a blackout night because it will be the debut of their all-black primary jerseys. There will even be fireworks for the player walkouts, which is a first for the program. Season starts with taking on Detroit FC on Saturday, starting at 7.30 at Toyota Field. Good luck, guys. Yeah, good luck. Time now, 4.42 and about 49 degrees. Coming up next, a first look at a new game that places players in a recognizable but distant dystopian future. And next, new details in the case against a woman accused of faking her own kidnapping five years ago. Welcome back. It's 445. Authorities are revealing more information in the case of Sherry Papini, the woman accused of faking her own kidnapping five years ago. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details in the case against Sherry Papini, the woman accused of faking her own kidnapping, is behind bars. Authorities saying she's a danger and a flight risk out of her court appearance on Tuesday. I just got home from work and uh, my wife wasn't there, which is unusual. That three week search in 2016 for Papini, now a five year investigation, unraveling what authorities describe as an elaborate web of lies. She faces up to 25 years in prison if convicted of charges. Her husband exclusively telling ABC News just days after they reunited about the moment one of the officers told him to prepare himself for. Bruises were just intense, the bumps from, you know, being hit and kicked and whatever else. And coming up at 7 a.m., George Stephanopoulos goes one on one with the Shasta County Sheriff in a live interview. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, the voices of cast members from The Matrix and the John Wick films are featured in a new video game. CNN's Rick Damagella reports. I'm running out of time, Elizabeth. The land is dying. Horizon Forbidden West places players in a recognizable but distant dystopian future. I have to find a way to fix it all. And the answer is somewhere out in the Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West picks up on Horizon Zero Dawn, which was a, uh, a great adventure starring a character named Aloy, trying to figure out her roots and how she fits into this crazy world. I've had challenges of my own these past six months, Aloy. 
The difference is I've made progress. The game's voice cast includes John Wick actor Lance Reddick and Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix. She plays a character named Tilda, and uh, that's all I'll say. She's an incredibly important character in this game. It's a really, really well-crafted game, and you will see remnants of San Francisco and uh, Las Vegas and things as you're traversing this vast open-world map. Everywhere I look, things are falling apart. There's a great allegory in this game about the fragility of the existence that we know and the permanence of nature and how nature will win out. That the strength to stand alone is the strength to make a stand. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. At last check, things are moving there at Highway 281 and Grayson. See that camera shaking just mm -hmm. a little bit in different parts of town right now. If you walk outside right now, you're like, yeah, it's cooler. It's not too bad. But if you go up I-10 into the hill country, whoa, Nelly, is it colder? Justin's here with us now, and he does have an update on some of those wind chills this morning. Yeah, there are, there are wind chills right now are in the 30s in the hill country. So, yes, this, this is kind of a late season cold front. This is not the only one we have in the forecast. We've got another one coming on Friday. So prepare yourself for a lot of ups and downs this week, but some cool weather for sure today and tomorrow. 32 in Abilene. It's 39 San Angelo, 50 right now in San Antonio, 55 in Del Rio. That cold air spilling down through Texas at this hour. Still warm out ahead of the front, but that changes here fairly soon. Laredo still checking in at 72. We're on the tail end of the precipitation with this front. We're still seeing some showers, but most of it's light. Take a look at this around Dallas. There's actually snow flying this morning. It's that cold. We're in March, but there is some snow on the map uh, just west of Dallas. They'll see a little bit. They're not expecting accumulations, but pretty impressive nonetheless. And then you get into some severe weather out ahead of this Memphis down into parts of Arkansas. A little closer look at our neck of the woods. We've got some ice showers out there, especially as you get out towards Uvalde and Hondo. These are lifting north. It's not going to add up to much, but we are seeing a little bit of rain here and there, and that's that is a good thing. We'll take the rain at this point. I think most of the rain shuts off by the time we get into, say, midday. Right now, we've got uh, 50 degrees at the airport, cloudy skies, northerly winds at 22 and gusty. These winds are going to pick up a little bit more this morning before they begin to die down some this afternoon. 44 Comfort, 46 in Bandera. It's 43 Bulverde, 55 Pleasanton, 52 in Divine. The warmer stuff's down there around Catula and Laredo, as I said, 61 there, 72 in Laredo. But these temperatures will cool down as well as that front continues to make some pretty quick progress off to the south. Wind gusts, gusting now close to 40 in Hondo, gusting to 33 here in town, gusting close to 30 out in Eagle Pass. So it is windy and there is a wind chill. Keep in mind, temperatures have to be below 50 degrees to get that wind chill, but we're starting to see it now. Kerrville feels like 37, feels like 37 here in Fredericksburg. And with the temperatures likely going to drop into the 40s a little bit later this morning, we'll see some wind chills here in San Antonio as well. Wind gusts forecast. I mentioned the winds will uh, die down some as we get into the afternoon. We're still talking gusts here, 20 to maybe 25, but better than the 35 to 40 that we may experience this morning. So still breezy into the afternoon, just not as windy. And our forecast for the rest of today, we actually drop into the 40s by midday, 47, 49 by 2 p.m. And then we rebound some once we get a little bit of sun this afternoon up to 53. Still a chilly day nonetheless. And I mentioned some of that clearing. So clouds try to move off to the east and that'll provide for some sun, especially out west. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, you're going to see quite a bit of sun today. But the clouds build right back in by, oh, by the overnight hours. And then by tomorrow morning for the morning commute, 30% chance of showers. So uh, some light rain returns to the area. That sticks around for first half of tomorrow before we get some clearing Tuesday afternoon. But with all these clouds, that's going to keep temperatures pretty chilly tomorrow. In fact, it'll be a little bit cooler than today. And I mentioned those ups and downs this week. Look at the seven, next seven days. So we got 50s today, 50 tomorrow for high. That's it. 66 Wednesday starts to warm up. We're up into the mid 70s by Thursday above average. Here comes our next run. And boy, that one on that cold front on Friday looks pretty strong. And I think we can see some temperatures near freezing Saturday and Sunday morning. Now afternoon temperatures will rebound into the 60s by Saturday and Sunday. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 30% chance of showers mainly in the morning tomorrow. We get sun Wednesday and Thursday, although 
Thursday will start off with some fog likely. And then here comes that next front. Right now, the way it looks to me, I think temperatures probably start off at 60 Friday morning in the 60s and then drop into the 40s by the afternoon with a chance of some showers. And then Saturday, Sunday morning, near freezing. If you're planning on doing some planting this week, don't <laughs> wait because we've got uh, we've got temperatures likely at least touching freezing over the weekend. Wow. So so don't like wait till tomorrow or the next day. Just don't do it at all. I would this just week? wait, wait next till next week. week. Next week. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Okay. Just to be safe. Got it. I mean, just you were kind of gray about that there. You know, there's that weird <laughs> no. gray area. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Justin. Uh, we will wait. Thank yeah. you very much, Justin. 452, about 49 degrees. And coming up next, how Robert Pattinson's The Batman is exceeding expectations at the box office. In a big way, and that's a good thing for the movie biz. All right, let's check your lotto numbers this morning. Pick 3722, Fireball 9. Your daily four numbers, 1953, Fireball 5. Five. Cash 5, 9, 15, 23, 32, 35. Lotto, Texas, 4, 14, 37, 39, 51, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 8, 23, 37, 52, 63, Powerball 13, Power Play 2. Good luck. Welcome back. The new Batman movie exceeds expectations plus details on a Will Smith sequel. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. I'm vengeance. The Batman was expected to open with at least 100 million bucks, and it did that and more. 128.5 million for Robert Pattinson's bow as an even darker Dark Knight. It's so morning. The Batman's also only the second pandemic-era movie to score a $100 million opening weekend after Spider-Man No Way Home. Add the $120 million from overseas showings, and the Batman's total opening take is $248.5 million. Bucks. We're getting yet another Alien movie, the fifth in the four-decade franchise, not counting spin-offs and prequels. Word is this one will stream on Hulu. Speaking of sequels, Michael B. Jordan will join Will Smith in a sequel to his 2007 post-apocalyptic drama, I Am Legend, according to reports. And Breaking Bad star Brian Cranston, 66 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Uh, the Alien news is amazing, but I Am Legend, that's, that's astounding. I mean, such a good action flick. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It would be good to see it. Yeah. Right now, 457, about 49 degrees. And this morning, Russia has intensified strikes across Ukraine, pushing toward the capital of Kyiv. How the U.S. State Department is addressing reports of deliberate attacks on civilians. Plus, we'll tell you about some new phone charging tech that can charge your phone in less than 10 minutes. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. And here's a look at Trans Guide out there, those cameras at, uh-oh, Loop 410 at Old Pearsall Road. Not sure what that is, but we'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The conflict in Ukraine ramps up as Ukrainian President Zelensky says Russia is planning a new wave of attacks. The latest coming up. As you wake up this morning, it's uh, windier out there and cooler even here in town. And it's cold in the Texas Hill Country. We'll get an update on how much more temperatures could drop today as we get your Monday started. Morning, everybody. It is Monday the 7th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. And this morning, I forgot about the wind. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's that noise outside? But it continued. And I was like, oh, yeah. It's it was windy. rattling my windows a little bit this morning. Did you remember a jacket this morning? Uh, well, I was kind of in a rush. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll survive because I'm going back home right after. So I no. think that's a yes. No. Oh, no, it's a no. Okay. <laughs> it's a no. I was <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, don't put her on a witness stand. Right now, 501. Let's go over to Justin in the weather lab. Steph, Steph. I know. Come on. I knew the wind was there, but I ran out without it. I was yeah. like, ah, I'll just tough it out. Well, for folks that are just tuning in, we just sent out a push alert to your phone on the KSAT weather app to let you know. Yes, you want the jacket this morning. Yes, it is windy. Temperatures at the bus stop, 48 degrees. We're going to see a few showers out there, too. Don't know that you necessarily need an umbrella. Most everything we're seeing is light, but you may take it just in case. Northerly winds 15 to 25. In temperatures this afternoon, only warming up to about 53. So this is not going to be a big warm up today. Very, very different from the last couple of days in mostly cloudy skies a little bit later this afternoon. We've been tracking the front uh, all last night with meteorologist Katie Blake, and now it has passed through the area. And here we are, 50 degrees at the airport. 
We are seeing temperatures below freezing in some spots across North Texas. That's resulting in a little bit of snow, if you can believe that. Wichita Falls at 29, 31 in Abilene. Dallas at 38, so this front, it, it means business. It's going to really knock down temperatures today. I mentioned that snow. There you go. You see some of the blue on the map there, just west of Dallas. It's all very light, but just sort of a gee whiz thing, considering we are now in almost mid-March. You see some of the showers there around Uvalde and Hondo. Those will work towards San Antonio. So we're not done with the rain just yet. There's a chance for some showers throughout the morning, but rain chances will basically go away this afternoon. 44 Curva, 42 in Fredericksburg, 50 in New Braunfels. Out ahead of the front, still some warmer air, but that cooler air is surging in here pretty quickly. And the forecast calls for temperatures to be uh, in the 40s for the first half of the day, then maybe rebounding some this afternoon with a little bit of sun into the 50s. Those winds 15 to 25 and gusty. We could see some gusts close to 40 miles per hour this morning, which means driving may not be so fun, Stephen. For those high profile vehicles, Justin, and unfortunately, Monday morning is already starting off with some problems. Check out what's happening here at 410 at Old Pearsall. Let's get a closer look from Trans Guide. Now, what we're seeing is a slowdown there on the access road, uh, but actually happening here on the highway of 410. We do have many first responders that are out there on the scene. Uh, we did receive information about a deadly crash involving an 18 wheeler out there, so it's unclear how long first responders are going to be out there, but we're already seeing the impacts in that direct uh, area uh, with slight slow down though. It's still very early. You can see in the southbound lanes behind that icon, there is some orange starting to build up, which is an indication traffic is coming to a slowdown. So for those that travel through that area, be prepared, may want to find that alternative route this morning. Let's get that wide look at the map at 504. Thankfully, no other issues to report. It's still a very quiet start here on the roadways in town. Uh, no delays if you're traveling into San Antonio just yet, but the concern is really going to be right here. Again, 410 at Old Pearsall is a view from Trans Guide, but I believe we have Sarah Acosta who is live there this morning. Sarah, what have you been able to find out? accident. Police told me that they got a call around 348 for a SUV pinned under an 18 wheeler. I'm going to get out of the way to show you this extreme damage. I mean, that front of that dark colored SUV completely just destroyed. Uh, so what police told us, what they know so far is around 348, that dark colored SUV was traveling here southbound on Loop 410, and this 18 wheeler was pulled off to the side of the highway. We don't know why it was pulled off the side, but it did have its flashing lights on and emergency lights on, and that, uh, that SUV slammed in behind, behind it getting stuck underneath. So originally it was called as a driver pinned underneath an 18 wheeler. Uh, when police arrived, they determined that that driver had already died. And right now we actually see the medical examiner here on scene. They are working to uh, get that driver out of that vehicle at this time. As for that 18, the driver of the 18 wheeler, he is not injured according to police. Uh, but police do have the entire lanes of the loop 410 southbound lanes. They are uh, completely blocked off at this time. That's why, as Stephen mentioned, you're seeing a lot of traffic buildup on the frontage road. We don't know at this time if alcohol or any drugs were involved. We do know that high speeds were involved according to police. We don't have an age or identity of that driver at this time, but uh, police will probably be out here at least for the next half hour as they're working to clear this scene. Live from the southwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police say one of its officers is responsible for the death of a man crossing the street. That officer was in his patrol unit while responding to a call on the city's west side. It happened on the corner of West Commerce and Northwest 39th this weekend. The niece of the victim, Belinda Herrera, identified him as Feliciano Jimenez. Surveillance video shows Jimenez moments before he was hit at a convenience store. His family says he was checking his bank account to check if he had enough for groceries. It's hard because I never thought it was going to be one of my family members that was going to pass away there. And the way he passed away was awful. Edada says they have been calling on added security measures for months but have had no luck. San Antonio police officials explained the on-duty officer was responding to a call when he did not see Jimenez. They currently have two investigations going, a criminal one and an administrative one. 
CPS Energy warning customers of scammers calling and asking for payments. If you receive a call that appears to be from CPS Energy and the caller tells you to dial another number and make a payment, the utility says just hang up. CPS has reported several reports from callers about spoof numbers calling them. If you receive one of these calls, CPS Energy urges customers to record the phone number. The person is telling you to call, hang up, and then report it. Residential customers can report the scam calls at 210-353-2222 and commercial customers should call 210-353-3333. Russian President Putin intensifies strikes across Ukraine while killing dozens and civilians of civilians rather and disrupting evacuation efforts. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. Overnight, Russia declaring a ceasefire to open humanitarian corridors temporarily for civilian evacuations from Kyiv and other major cities. But there's skepticism as Russia previously violated its own pledge for ceasefire in recent days. This comes amid a dire warning from Ukrainian President Zelensky about Russia's latest plan to use high precision weapons to destroy Ukrainian military industrial facilities. Saying hundreds of thousands of people live and work there. This this will be a premeditated murder. The State Department confirming credible reports that Russia is deliberately targeting civilians in Ukraine. The Wall Street Journal reporting Russia is recruiting Syrians to join the fight, hoping their expertise in urban combat can help take Kyiv, Ukraine's capital. The onslaught of fighting intensifying as Russian forces encircle cities like Mariupol, where evacuations halted this weekend due to intense shelling by Russian forces. Already more than one and a half million people have fled Ukraine, with at least a million to Poland. Most of them are just very, very tired, terrified and confused because they don't know what to expect. In less than a week, the U.S. and NATO have ramped up efforts to help Ukraine. The New York Times reports more than 17,000 anti-tank weapons have crossed the border into Kyiv and other major cities. Nearly $350 million worth of advanced weapons have arrived in record time. The Times report also saying the U.S. is providing real-time intelligence to Ukraine, cybersecurity support, and a secure connection between Zelensky and President Biden. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the U.S. is in active discussions with European allies about banning Russian oil, although no decision has been made yet. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 509, about 49 degrees. And still ahead, what you need to know about TikTok and Netflix suspending their services in Russia. And up next, to look back at this weekend's special dawn at the Alamo ceremony. And taking a look outside with a live cam, a very windy morning and also kind of chilly. It's 49 degrees for the start of spring break for many people out there. Be prepared. 513, welcome back. It was a day of remembrance here in San Antonio that marks a major chapter in Texas history. Dawn at the Alamo has been a long standing tradition, and this weekend many gathered at the local landmark. The fall of the Alamo happened in March 6 of 1836, and it marked 186 years since that historic battle at the Alamo ended. People from around Texas visited our city to remember and honor the special day. This is just part of who we are. So we wanted to come and honor those men that gave their lives um, on both sides and just celebrate what is Texas. Humber and his son Everett traveled to the Alamo City from Abilene. JD says he is a member of the Sons of the Republic of Texas. Looks like a normal ceremony there with lots of folks lining up for the first time in probably years. Yes, good crowd. 514, about 49 degrees. And coming up next, we are checking out some new technology that can now charge your phone in just nine minutes. I will tell you how you could make $300,000 courtesy of YouTube. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. 
Meet the four-year-old who refused to wear pants this morning. Why, Andy? I'm a dinosaur. Won't wear pants. We'll eat Eggo waffles. Get your wins where you can when you Lego with Eggo. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. In today's tech fights, more companies are severing ties with Russia. Netflix announced that it is suspending operations in the country, and TikTok is no longer allowing Russian users to post new videos or see videos shared from other parts of the world, an effort to curb disinformation. New technology can now charge your phone in just nine minutes. It was unveiled by a Chinese phone maker, but Apple and Samsung are reportedly working to copy that feature. The technology is expected to allow companies to design slimmer, lighter phones, and it works without overheating the battery. And podcasters are reportedly cashing in big on YouTube. According to Bloomberg, the site is offering up to $300,000 for video versions of popular shows. The move would help YouTube go head-to-head -head with Spotify which already supports video podcasts. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's now 18 minutes past the hour. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, most, for the most part, the roads are looking pretty quiet, calm, and clear. But as we get a look at around town, we do have some issues that we want to address. But let's go ahead and just take a look. Right now, Trans Guide showing an easy commute to right over here at 410 at Jackson Keller, 281 at Grayson. A little bit of a shaky shot there, but uh, no problems have been detected in these particular areas of Trans Guide. Again, looks pretty quiet, but as I mentioned, there are issues out there. Pretty serious one happening here off 410 southbound right there at Old Pearsall Road. You can see that buildup of traffic due to a deadly crash. According to Sarah Costa, what she was able to learn from investigators on the scene that this is involving two vehicles, an 18 wheeler and an SUV. So we are working to get more information, but you can see that's already impacting that drive time there for drivers in the southbound lanes of 410. Getting a bird's eye view of the, the map at 519. Again, no delays. That is going to be one spot that we're going to watch closely. Traveling into San Antonio, looking pretty good. No delays from Bernie to downtown, Bulverde 281. Everything's looking okay as well coming in from New Braunfels. So not really concerned there, but the concern is going to be right over here off this crash where we have it off of 410 at Old Pearsall doesn't look like it's improving at all. But again, we're going to work to bring you more information as the morning does go on. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. We've been on the air less than an hour and already we've seen a couple of those transguide cameras shaking a bit out there. Yes, it was a very noisy morning. It was. And, you know, that's sort of our main concern, I think, with this front. It's the temperatures, but also the gusty winds. We've got gusts now upwards of 35 miles per hour. So it's going to be a windy morning. This front uh, came through a little bit earlier this morning, and now we've got the cold air starting to settle in as well. You see the numbers behind the front. It's 20 right now in Lubbock, 18 in Amarillo. Yes, we are in mid-March, but these fronts, uh, they can still pack a punch this time of year, and this one certainly is. Uh, this cool air will spread all the way down into the valley a little bit later today. We've also got some rain right along the front. We've had a few showers around San Antonio. The more uh, significant weather is up to our north and east, where we've got uh, tornado watch boxes along the Mississippi River. That will all push east, and there is even some uh, snow, at least the, uh, the radar is starting to show a little bit of snow there around the Dallas area. A lot of that probably is, is very, very light, but it just goes to show you that the air is cold behind this front. And you can see some of those showers that are tracking through northeast Texas. And then for our area, most of this is pretty light. We've seen some light showers around town, but uh, starting to see a few heavier showers develop there in Uvalde and Medina County. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. If you're watching us from Sabinal this morning, you're getting uh, some rain there. Go ahead and take the umbrella as you head out the door this morning. You probably won't need it all day. You won't need it all day, but you uh, may be able to use it this morning if you're going to be out and about. Uh, as we look at the live cam here, we've got cloudy skies and 50 degrees reported at the airport right now. 54 stints and 51 Kelly, 50 at Randolph and a good north northeasterly wind right now at 14 miles per hour. 44 Comfort, 44 Kerrville, 42 in Las Maples. It is uh, 42 up there in Junction in Fredericksburg. Obviously, we're going to have a, a big range in temperatures because of this front right now sitting right about there. So it's 68 Beville and the, the front has just made it through Catula 56, but still 70 in Laredo and those winds gusting to 32 here in town close to 40 mile per hour gusts reported in Hondo gusting to 30 now in Beeville and uh, near 30 in Catula that is producing a wind chill in spots mainly just the hill country right now but I think a little bit later this morning we'll see a wind chill even here in San Antonio right now it feels like 37 in Kerrville in the forecast for today 
Well, it'll be a slow warm up. I think by midday we're still dealing with upper 40s here in town. It will be warmer out west where they get a little more sun. And then by the afternoon, once we do see a little bit of sun here in San Antonio, that boosts temperatures to around 53. Wind gusts, uh, they'll start to calm some too as we get later into the afternoon. Still breezy, but not as windy as it is this morning. Clouds try to clear out some later today, as we mentioned, but then they build right back in tonight. We'll see more showers tomorrow morning, about a 30% chance on your Tuesday morning before that all slides east. Uh, still probably a great day on your Tuesday with some clearing out west. And we go on a roller coaster ride this week. 50 tomorrow because we have the clouds, because we have the rain, we're just not going to warm up much. 66 Wednesday, 76 Thursday, and we get another strong front on Friday. This brings more windy conditions and temperatures may fall into the 40s yet again by Friday afternoon. The other big story, possible freeze Saturday and Sunday morning, guys. All right. We'll, we'll prepare for the cold. I keep looking at that time change. I was going to say, can we end the <laughs> forecast at Saturday yes. and, and not include the time change I, yet? I, I would be okay with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, me too. Monday morning is going to be tough, y'all. Yeah. That next Monday morning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. We'll tough it out, I guess, Justin. <laughs> we, have, we have to. <laughs> we don't have, really have a choice, do we? <laughs> yeah. 523, about 49 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, the lost daughter tops the Indie Spirit Awards, plus the latest on an actor that fainted while on stage. Today in entertainment news, movie awards, and a British theater mishap on stage. Here is CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. I saw you at the beach today. I didn't see you. I saw you. A big day for The Lost Daughter. The film Independent Spirit Awards gave the drama its Best Feature Award and honored first-time feature director and screenwriter Maggie Gyllenhaal with Best Director and Best Screenplay. It's so refreshing to meet someone with the same values. Mm. Um, Here's your first look at the rom-com Seven Days. Geraldine Viswanathan and Karen Sony star as seemingly mismatched singles whose traditional Indian parents set them up on a date, which turns into a week together when everything shuts down due to COVID. Seven Days just won the Indie Spirit Award for Best First Feature and debuts in U.S. theaters March 25th. Of course, it's a, a, a great deal of pressure. But Taryn Egerton is recovering in more ways than one after an incident in London. On opening night of his latest play, the actor passed out and collapsed to the stage. His understudy had to finish the performance. Egerton posted on Instagram the next day, I am completely fine, slightly sore neck and a bruised ego, but I'm fine. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, about 49 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to get you up to date on the situation going on in Ukraine as a third round of talks with Russia is scheduled for today. If you need some help figuring out in-district charter school programs, we'll help you, we'll tell you about some new tech that is helping parents. And we're going to tell you about a, a way you could save a little money on Disney Plus subscriptions. Making headlines this morning as Russian forces continue to advance. Ukraine's president is accusing Russia of, quote, deliberate murder. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, kind of noisy, kind of chilly. We're at 49 degrees and it's windy out there. Noisy, not because of some street party or anything like that. <laughs> noisy because of the strong winds. Yes, actually, I thought it was a street party as, as loud as it was this morning. I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And I forgot about it. It was what? way louder in, in her neighborhood than in mine. <laughs> 531, good morning, everybody. It is Monday. It is March 7th. Spring break yes. beginning for some folks. Yeah, for a lot of people. So a lot of people next week, but for people having spring break, this week it's going to be a cold one right Justin it is probably not exactly what the tourism board San Antonio's tourism board was hoping for right uh, we're going to get some cooler weather today uh, cooler weather tomorrow the good news is it does warm up we'll get some sun by midweek into Thursday before another front heads our way we've got some showers out there this morning uh, it was a little wet for me coming into work uh, earlier this morning. Right now, there's not a lot of shower activity over San Antonio, but we do notice some showers. In fact, some heavier showers just north of Sabinal. These are lifting north towards Utopia and Tarpley. Again, nothing over San Antonio right now. I, I think we could see a couple more showers before the morning uh, winds down. And then by this afternoon, the rain chances pretty much go away. 
and those uh, showers are lining up along a cold front, which is now pushing towards the Texas Gulf Coast. Heavier rain is to our north and east where there is actually severe weather this morning. There's snow up to the north. This is a powerful system. It's working its way through the country and it's going to bring a variety of weather, including here in Texas. It's in the teens and 20s as you get up in the Texas Panhandle for us. Temperatures are tumbling, and right now we're at 50. 44 Kerrville, 42 Fredericksburg, 50 in New Braunfels, 54 Uvalde. And temperatures actually get a little bit colder. So I know the kids, they're going to try to run out the door in shorts and T-shirts. Don't let them. Uh, these temperatures are going to be chilly. Uh, 47 noontime, 49 by 2 p.m., 53 by 4 p.m. with some partly cloudy skies in those winds. Yes, they're very gusty this morning. They'll try to die down some tonight. We're going to see a cool day again tomorrow, too, with some more chances of rain. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. But let's go over to Stephen now. We've had issues on the roadways this morning. Yeah, not looking great, good here, Justin. 410 at Pearsall has been the problem spot for the, at least over an hour. We're getting a look at some flashing lights, and some of the lanes are blocked off there of traffic on Highway 410. You can see again, we do have an 18-wheeler and uh, that was involved in a crash, also involving an SUV. Uh, right now, we are seeing the impact of traffic. Those lanes appear to be shut down from this view at Transguide. Let's take a look at our map because all we're seeing is that red and orange continuing to build. As you saw from that view on Transguide, it does appear those uh, those vehicles are actually on the frontage road. However, those lanes of traffic are closed down again at Loop 410 southbound. So watch out there. But as we get a wider look at the map, it doesn't look like we have any other problems. Looks like a stall may have popped up near I-10 and Hebner. We'll check that in in just a moment, but no concerns really. But uh, make sure if you have those high profile vehicles to drive carefully. But this is going going to be the main problem at this hour. Sarah Acosta is live there this morning. Sarah, how are the conditions looking like uh, from your end? Well, Stephen, like you said, all the lanes of the southbound 410 highway, they are closed off. They are uh, rerouting all the drivers to the frontage road. It's where we're seeing that buildup, but this is a deadly accident. I'm going to warn you that damage is very extensive that we're about to show you. That dark colored SUV around 345 this morning, police got a call uh, for this SUV that slammed into the back of this 18 wheeler. And you can see it's almost like a tuna can, like the front of it is completely obliterated. Uh, uh, now, police say they got that call around 345 this morning. The call originally came out as a driver pinned underneath an 18 wheeler. So when police arrived to the crash, they determined the driver did not survive and had already died from those injuries. Police say the 18 wheeler was pulled over onto the side of the highway with this emergency lights on. And when the driver of the SUV slammed into the back of it, that crash taking out the whole front of that SUV. Police say the driver who died is a male, but they didn't give an age or a name. Now, the driver of the 18-wheeler is okay and not injured. As for the cause of the crash, police are still trying to figure that out. At this time, police say that speed is definitely a factor in this crash. They did not say if alcohol or any kind of drugs were involved. Now, the medical examiner was here earlier. They have already taken the body of that driver who died away at this time. And so I feel like this is going to be closed off for a while because you can see that SUV and A.T. Miller are still here. So they have to call out the tow trucks at this time. Live from the southwest side, I'm Sarah Acosta. KSAT 12 News, Mark and Stephanie. 535, a third round of talks between Ukraine and Russia is scheduled for later today. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes as the UN says more than one million Ukrainians have fled the country in fear for their lives. As Ukrainian National Police Special Forces join the military and even ordinary citizens to protect their country, President Volodymyr Zelensky accuses Russia of deliberate murder after the shelling of Ukrainian territories. It seems it is not enough for the Russian troops, not enough ruined destinies, crippled lives. They want to kill more. Russia has fired around 600 missiles since the start of the invasion, according to a senior U.S. defense official, and has roughly 95 percent of its amassed combat power in Ukraine. The aggressor's audacity is a clear signal to the West that sanctions imposed against Russia are not enough. The Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights says more than 360 civilians have been killed since military action began. My boyfriend died here, my aunt, my cousin, my grandmother, my sister's husband, and a friend that stayed with us. And Western officials expect Russia will increase the strikes 
putting the lives of more civilians at risk. Sadly and tragically, I think this is uh, this war is going to get far worse uh, before it gets better. On Sunday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced the House plans to pass $10 billion in emergency aid to Ukraine, adding that work is underway to ban Russian energy imports. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The price of oil has jumped more than $12 a barrel. Brent crude has surged above $130 a barrel and benchmark U.S. crude up $10 at more than $125 a barrel. The surge follows the continuing war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the average price of regular gas across the U.S. has risen above $4 per gallon for the first time since 2008. Prices could soon soar even higher if the U.S. makes a move to ban Russian oil imports. But the White House says no decision has been made. And happy birthday, Disneyland Paris. The theme park turns 30 years old this year. Celebrations kicked off this weekend. Disney's iconic characters could be seen dancing in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle as families and fans looked on. Now, it was originally called Euro Disney. It first opened in April of 1992 with then CEO Michael Eisner doing the ribbon cutting along with Walt's nephew, Roy E. Disney. Celebrations will take place until the anniversary date is reached. 538, about 49 degrees. And still ahead, how you could soon save a little money on a Disney Plus subscription. And up next, how technology devoted to industry charter school programs is helping San Antonio moms better navigate the school system. And speaking of schools, if you're on spring break this week, not the ideal temperatures maybe. We're starting at 49 degrees. We'll be right back. 541, some San Antonio school districts include several charter schools. In fact, SAIE, SAISD has an entire section of its website devoted to in-district charter school programs. And as a part of leading SA, Max Massey talked to the head of San Antonio Moms about how technology is helping to navigate the process. Guys, yes, it is important to note the huge growth in specialized charter schools that we've seen in our area over the last few years. There are public and private charter schools revolving around certain subjects, subjects like technology, medicine, even law. Inga Cotton, the head of SA Charter Moms, she joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about schools and we talked about the charter school process. So I think for, for my own kids, um, they experienced distance learning in the pandemic and it made them feel sort of disconnected with their teachers and their peers. And in order to get them re-engaged, I tried to really listen to them about what their dreams were for what they wanted to be when they grew up. And they both spoke up that they want careers in technology. And so I researched and found a charter school that specializes in technology. And so they do all their core classes, but they also get electives and clubs that, um, that feed into the careers that they're interested in. They get to interact with people working in those fields. And it's gotten my kids much more engaged and motivated to uh, reconnect with school and think about their future. And I think, I think that's what folks are ready for, is that uh, we've experienced so much disruption and trauma from the pandemic, but it's, it's time to think about a brighter future and how we can help our kids uh, get ready for that. You can see our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next weekend. Thank you, Max. 542, about 48 degrees. And coming up next, cleanup continues in parts of Iowa following deadly tornadoes this weekend. And now people there face another threat this week. Quarter to six, the National Weather Service now says a deadly twister that hit parts of Iowa over the weekend was an EF3, if not stronger. At least seven people were killed across the state, two of them children and more than 50 homes were damaged or destroyed. ABC's Alex Perez has more. Terrifying video showing the moment that monster tornado ripped through Iowa. Oh the National Weather Service believes it was an EF3 tornado, winds of at least 136 miles per hour, destroying parts of Winterset just outside of Des Moines. This is, I think, the worst anyone has seen in uh, quite a long time. Severe storms slamming other parts of Iowa, baseball size hail raining down, cracking windshields. Windshield. At least is seven people killed in storms across Iowa, including two young members of the same family, just five and two years old. This drone footage capturing the devastation.
Roofs torn off, buildings reduced to rubble, more than 50 homes damaged or destroyed. We were hunkered down in the basement and uh, it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. Jennifer and Adam O'Neill, owners of a flower farm in Winterset, surviving the storm, showing the devastation left behind. So our red barn is gone. And we're standing on the foundation of our little flower cottage. This is our event barn. O'Neill, emotional and grateful for the outpouring of support. The way that people came out and helped it's okay. was, it's uh, okay. it was, it was amazing. And President Biden has been in touch with the governor here to offer federal assistance if needed. But take a look behind me here. You can see the debris is piling up and the cleanup is only just beginning. And now they're bracing for more extreme weather here. A winter blast that will bring snow and single digit wind chills. Alex Perez, ABC News, Winterset, Iowa. In your morning consumer headlines, the pandemic could have a long lasting effect on America's commuter railroads. Systems across the country are still dealing with lower ridership. The American Public Transportation Association says passenger counts on the five biggest systems are only between 25 and 55 percent of pre-pandemic levels. Visuals worry with more people working from home, those numbers may stay down. If you are looking to get Disney Plus but hoping to save some cash, an ad supported tier is now in the works. It will be one of the subscription options later this year about an exact date or what the price of the package will look like are not yet known. Disney said it sees the ad tier as a building block and the company's goal of reaching at least 230 million long term subscribers over the next two years. Disney Plus has about 130 million as of January. A rare Toyota has just sold for $2.5 million at a car auction. So that makes this 1967 Toyota Shelby 2000 GT the most valuable Japanese car ever sold at auction. A large part of its value comes from the fact it was turned into a competitive race car by the legendary Carroll Shelby. There were only 351 Toyota 2000 GT models ever built between 1967 and 1971. One was even featured in the James Bond movie You Only Live Twice, but this one is the rare of the rare, the very first truly world-class Japanese sports car. Very cool. 549 on your Monday morning. Very expensive. We will not be seeing those cars on our roadways. Stephen Cavazos. No, I don't think so, at least not just yet. And unfortunately, there were not seeing any vehicles traveling through here at 410 at Old Pearsall. Let's get a closer look. Right now, you can see that we have those first responders that have that area blocked off. It's been blocked off for quite a while now, and that's because there is a deadly crash involving an 18-wheeler and an SUV. But take a look right now. We do have some first uh, crews that are out there working to get this scene cleared up, but we can almost make out that vehicle uh, that collided with that 18-wheeler right there. Uh, the camera shot a little bit shaky, but as Sarah Acosta showed us, a little bit earlier, it doesn't appear that this scene will be clearing up anytime soon, and it is already impacting the driver's commute. Take a look right now. Those southbound lanes are being is both being impacted in off 410. Uh, right now, we're seeing that buildup stretching back a little bit. Now, TxDOT has not listed this highway closed at this time, but of course, we do see those first responders out there. So a few lanes of traffic are blocked off, so you're going to have to find a different route this morning. Driving up over here to I-10 at Hebner westbound lanes, we found a stall that's not causing any issues, but looks like that can be the trending problem this morning as we drive over here to Loop 410 westbound at Perrin Vital. So make sure you're checking those vehicles and watch out whenever you see a stranded motorist on the road. We do have another stall that looks like it popped up off of I-10 near I-37. We'll check that out. But so far, the main problem is going to be right here at 410. And what we're looking at in those northbound lanes is a lot more vehicles that are moving. So we could possibly see that stretch of congestion just continuing to build as the morning does go on. Guys, thank you very much, Steve. And folks, you might be surprised after a very warm weekend, but winter has return to parts of Texas today. <laughs> yes. Hopefully temporary. Yeah, well, it is, but we've got another front later this week, so a lot of flip-flopping here. Uh, you're going to want to switch the AC over to the heater today, and then again, we'll go back and forth throughout the week. As we look at the big picture here, some rain along this front. It's bringing severe weather to places like Memphis this morning where there are tornado watch boxes, another dynamic system. You saw that video of uh, the tornadoes up around Iowa. They're going to deal with some more weather today, too. So. It's sort of uh, turning into a busy scenario here across the country as we head into early March. Uh, as we look at temperatures across the states, 20 in Lubbock, 18 in Amarillo. Just to show you how cold this air mass is, and it's now starting to settle down into our area. 50 degrees at the airport. It is now down to 56 Beville, 56 in Catula. So the front is through there. Still has to make it through Corpus Christi and Laredo, but it will 
We're in the 40s in the Hill Country, 42 Kerrville, 41 in Fredericksburg. In looking at the uh, radar, we do have some showers that have developed behind the front, uh, moving through places like Utopia and Tarpley this morning. We had a few showers earlier around San Antonio. Not seeing much right now, but it's possible we can see a few more showers before it's all said and done this morning. A little wider view here, and there are some light returns even across some of our eastern counties. Cuero up towards Gonzales. Anything we see rain-wise today, is generally going to be on the light side. We're not expecting a whole lot of rain out of this, which is unfortunate because we do need more rain. 50 degrees at the airport, cloudy skies, dew point is at 37. North northeasterly winds at about 14 miles per hour and gusty. Gusts possible 30, 35, maybe even 40 miles per hour throughout the morning hours today. 42 Kerrville, 42 Las Maples, as we said. Uh, 54 out in Uvalde. We looked at those temperatures a little bit earlier. Now look at the wind gusts. Gusting close to 40 as we said in Hondo, gusting to 32 in San Antonio, gusting to 24 right now in Kerrville. And that is creating a wind chill in those places where the temperatures are below 50 degrees. Feels like 35 right now in Kerrville, feels like 34 in Fredericksburg. And I think we'll see some wind chills here in San Antonio uh, throughout the morning time. Here's a look at the forecast. Temperatures do fall off a little bit through midday, some cloud cover, and then maybe a few breaks in the clouds later today. Temperatures only make it up to 53. What a change after yesterday's high temperature of 81. Winds will start to calm some, still breezy this afternoon, but not as strong as they will be this morning. And as we look at the forecast here, clouds try to clear out a little bit this afternoon. The west for sure will get some clearing. If you're east of San Antonio, you may not because clouds build right back in tonight. There's a 30% chance of showers late tonight through early tomorrow morning. And then by midday tomorrow, that rain chance moves east. And we'll just start to see a little bit of clearing out west again tomorrow. I think here in San Antonio, probably a gray day on your Tuesday. And that's really going to keep temperatures down some. 50 tomorrow, that's it. That 30% chance of rain. 66 Wednesday, 76 Thursday. So those are our warm days. We'll get some fog Thursday morning. And then here comes another front. Right now scheduled to move in early Friday morning. Turns windy. Another chance for showers. But temperatures go from 60s down into the 40s potentially. And we've got some freezing temperatures both Saturday and Sunday morning. Look, the, the weekend looks great if you're outside during the afternoon. But the mornings are going to be cold. And keep that in mind if you have plans to plant this week. Yes, we could see another freeze even here in San Antonio Saturday morning. Yeah, good advice. We'll hold off on that planting. Yes. Thank you, Justin. Right now, 554, about 48 degrees. Let's look at your winning lot of numbers. We have pick 3722, two, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 1953, three, Fireball 5. Cash 5 numbers 9, 15, 23, 32, 35, Lot of Texas 4, 14, 37, 39, 51, 52. Powerball 8, 23, 37, 52, 63. The Powerball was 13, Power Play 2. Good morning. Coming up here, the latest on the war in Ukraine and the growing evidence that Vladimir Putin is targeting civilians with Russia's bombardment. Also, the number of refugees has grown to more than 1.7 million. The foreign minister of Ukraine joins us from the front lines. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, if you uh, have you already had breakfast this morning, today is National Cereal Day. We're going to share which one Americans are eating the most. And our top story this morning, a man dead after crashing his SUV into a parked 18-wheeler on the southwest side. Sarah Costa is tracking those details in a live report. And Stephen is keeping tabs from up using one of the Transguide cameras over there at 410 at Old Pearsall Road. We'll get you up to date on how this could slow you down coming up. New this morning, a man is dead after slamming his SUV into the back of an 18-wheeler. Details ahead. I'm ABC's Emwyn in Washington. The conflict in Ukraine ramps up as Ukrainian President Zelensky says Russia is planning a new wave of attacks. The latest coming up. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, drivers feeling big pain at the pumps and experts say the prices could continue to rise. We'll explain. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning for a lot of people. It's the start of spring break and surprisingly, we are starting very cold this morning. Live from KSAT 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. Happy spring break for some of you. Not all of you, but uh, many. Uh, it is Monday, March 7th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoyed this weekend. Very different weather wise to mm -hmm. what we're experiencing right now. Yeah, 80s yesterday dropped down into the 40s this morning. We've got spring break batch one this week. Another yeah. batch next week. And unless you're extremely brave, I don't see anybody <laughs> jumping in a pool today. Mm. Right? <laughs> Just not the weather for it. Not exactly the spring break I think some of us hoped for, but uh, this is what we're dealing with. Cool air working through. We had a cold front move through last night, and these temperatures are continuing to tumble. 49 degrees right now at the airport, down a degree from last hour. 36 San Angelo, you got 20s freezing numbers up across the Texas Panhandle and North Texas. And a little closer look at our area, 40s for a lot of places in the Hill Country, 42 Kerrville, 41 right now in Fredericksburg. Yet in the gusty winds, makes it feel that much colder. We're going to see gusty winds at least through the first half of the day. And Mark mentioned those temperatures yesterday, we made it up to 81. Now we're about 20 degrees cooler from where we were 24 hours ago, and it is uh, quite the change with this front. So it'll be sort of a shock to the system today. Uh, the radar showing we do still have a few showers out there. It was uh, rather wet across San Antonio earlier this morning, most of it light, but we did have some drizzle, some white rain. Now seeing that west of San Antonio, and we still could see a few more showers before the morning is over with. Winds will be the other big story now gusting to 39 here in San Antonio, so some gusts around 40. I'd say next couple of hours will be our windiest period, but even going into this afternoon, it'll still be a breezy day with those winds out of the north. Forecast calls for cloudy skies through the lunch hour, only 47 around lunchtime, and then temperatures will rebound some this afternoon with a little bit of sun, 53, the forecast high. Even cooler tomorrow before we rebound some and we get another front by the end of the week. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but Stephen has been a busy man this morning. Let's check in now with him for your traffic authority. Hey, thanks a lot, Justin. Uh, my advice to drivers, this is going to be an area that you're definitely going to want to avoid this morning. 410 at Old Pearsall. Let's get a closer look from this trans guide camera. You can see that we do have first responders that have been out there for quite a while now investigating a deadly crash that involved an 18 wheeler as well as an SUV. And by the looks of it, it does appear that these lanes of traffic have been closed. And we're seeing that from what this trans guide camera just now, it does look like uh, vehicles are able to get onto that on ramp there 410, but still a disaster when it comes to that area of of slowdown because we're seeing that's continuing to stretch and that's just continued to also build throughout the morning off the southbound lanes of 410 and Pearsall Road. So an area you're going to want to avoid. But uh, as we drive over here, the problem persists uh, 410 southbound this time at WW White. So we have to watch out carefully because it is a pretty busy morning on the roadways as we start this new work week at 603 though. We do have a few stalls that we reported a little bit earlier, so check those vehicles. But as I mentioned, the biggest problem is going to be right here off 410 at Old Pearsall. Soul Road. It does look like traffic is moving from this trans guide camera, but let's check in with Sarah Acosta, who is live there now. Sarah, what have you been able to find out? This is a deadly uh, crash, Stephen, and it looks like they're going to be clearing the scene in the next 10 minutes or so because that SUV that slammed into the back of this 18 wheeler is already on the tow truck and that tow truck driver brushing up all that debris and wreckage left behind. And I think this 18 wheeler is going to be driving off soon. So what police told us is that they got the call just after 345 this morning. The call originally came out as a driver pinned underneath an 18 wheeler. When police arrived to the crash, they determined the driver did not survive and had already died. Police say the 18 wheeler was pulled over onto the side of the highway with its emergency lights on when the driver of the SUV slammed into the back of it. That crash taking off basically the whole passenger side and a lot of that front side of the SUV. Uh, that damage is significant. Police say the driver who died is a male, but they didn't give an age or a name. And the driver of the 18 wheeler is okay. We actually saw him get out and check some of that wreckage earlier uh, just a bit ago. Now, police say they do believe that they think speed was a factor, uh, but they don't know if any anything else like alcohol or drugs played a role in this crash. Again, uh, the all the lanes for loop 410 southbound closed at this time. They're rerouting traffic onto the frontage road near the Pearsall exit, but it looks like they're going to be clearing the scene at least in the next 20, 30 minutes. Back to you guys. 
Some other top stories are following this morning. San Antonio police say one of their officers is responsible for the death of a man crossing the street. That officer in his patrol unit while responding to a call on the city's west side. It happened at the corner of West Commerce and Northwest 39th Street this weekend. The niece of victim Belinda, the niece of the victim, Belinda Herrera, identified him as Feliciano Jimenez. Surveillance video shows Jimenez moments before he was hit at a convenience store. His family says he was checking his bank account to see if he had enough for groceries. It's hard because I never thought it was going to be one of my family members that was going to pass away there. And the way he passed away was awful. Herrera says they've been calling on added security measures for months but have had no luck. SAPD explained the on-duty officer was responding to a call when he didn't see Jimenez. They currently have two investigations going, a criminal one and an administrative one. The House Sergeant at Arms has issued an emergency declaration for Capitol Police in response to trucker convoys in the Washington, D.C. area. There is concern that the so-called People's Convoy could snarl Washington traffic so much that officers will not be able to get to the Capitol. An armada of truckers and supporters circled the D.C. Beltway this weekend for four hours to protest pandemic restrictions. The convoy of hundreds of trucks, cars and SUVs traveled in a deliberately slow moving formation stretching over roughly 30 miles. Ironically, as the convoy pro protest continues, many of the COVID-19 mandates at federal and local levels have been blocked or rescinded. The National Weather Service now says a deadly tornado that hit part of Iowa this weekend was at least an EF3 in strength. At least seven people were killed across the state, two of them children. More than 50 homes were damaged or destroyed. Severe storms slammed other parts of Iowa as well, with baseball-sized hail raining down in some places. Now the state faces a blast of wintry weather this week. President Biden has been in touch with the state's governor to offer federal assistance if needed. Russian President Vladimir Putin intensifies strikes across Ukraine, pushing forces into cities like the capital Kiev and others while killing dozens of civilians and disrupting evacuation efforts. Ukrainian President Zelensky now preparing for another wave of attacks, vowing to fight on this as the mass exodus of civilians out of Ukraine into surrounding countries continues. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. Good morning. The UN says this conflict in Ukraine is forcing millions of people to flee the country, calling it the fastest growing refugee crisis that Europe has seen since World War II. Overnight, Russia declaring a ceasefire to open humanitarian corridors temporarily for civilian evacuations from Kyiv and other major cities. But there's skepticism, as Russia previously violated its own pledge for ceasefire in recent days. This comes amid a dire warning from Ukrainian President Zelensky about Russia's latest plan to use high-precision weapons to destroy Ukrainian military industrial facilities. Saying hundreds of thousands of people live and work there. The this will be a premeditated murder. The State Department confirming credible reports that Russia is deliberately targeting civilians in Ukraine. The Wall Street Journal reporting Russia is recruiting Syrians to join the fight, hoping their expertise in urban combat can help take Kyiv, Ukraine's capital. The onslaught of fighting intensifying as Russian forces encircle cities like Mariupol, where evacuations halted this weekend due to intense shelling by Russian forces. Already more than one and a half million people have fled Ukraine, with at least a million to Poland. Most of them are just very, very tired, terrified and confused because they don't know what to expect. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the U.S. is in active discussions with European allies about banning Russian oil, although no decision has been made yet. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Top of your morning consumer news, strong job growth across the U.S. now seen as a sign that the grip of COVID may finally be loosening. Employers added 678,000 jobs last month, according to the Labor Department. The nation's unemployment rate dropped to 3.8%. And podcasters are reportedly cashing in big on YouTube. According to Bloomberg, the site is offering up to $300,000 for video versions of popular shows. The move would help YouTube go head to head with Spotify, which already supports video podcasts. You may be celebrating a special occasion at the breakfast table this morning without even knowing it. That's because March 7th is National Cereal Day, a time to celebrate America's favorite breakfast food. Thanks to cereal makers Dr. John Harvey Kellogg and Charles Post, 
Cereal's been a morning staple for millions of Americans in the end of the 19th century. And coming up ahead on GMSA, we're going to show you which cereals are the most popular both around the country and right here in Texas. 611 about 48 degrees. And ahead on GMSA, medical examiners in North Wales are blaming a man's death on a caffeine overdose. We're going to have those details for you. And you probably noticed the high gas prices around town. We'll tell you why they've gone up and why some experts say they could go even higher. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 48 degrees this morning and it's a little windy. If you're not going to school, well, you know, bundle up if you're headed out for those outdoor plans. If you are going to school, definitely take that jacket. We'll be right back. Just about 6.15, topping today's Tech Bytes. More companies cutting ties with Russia. Netflix announced it's suspending operations there. And TikTok is no longer allowing Russian users to post new videos or see videos shared from other parts of the world in an effort to curb disinformation. And we are feeling the ripple effect of the tension in the Ukraine at the gas pump. Some drivers are now paying nearly $7 per gallon. And there are new indications this morning the U.S. may soon ban Russian oil, which means prices could go even higher. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Gas prices, shocking drivers at the pump. It's $100 and it's not even a full tank. The national average now topping $4 for the first time since 2008, and it's only 11 cents away from an old time record. In California, $4 a gallon would be a relief. The average there is $5.28. Prices at this Shell station in Los Angeles hitting nearly $7 the war in Ukraine fueling the surge. And prices could soon soar even higher as the U.S. appears to move closer to banning Russian oil imports. We are now talking uh, to our European partners and allies to look uh, in a coordinated way uh, at the uh, prospect of banning the import of Russian oil. Uh, while Not sure what happened there, but let's go ahead and check in on this crash that has been going on for quite a while there. Flute 410 at Old Pierce. All let's get a closer look right now as we do have first responders that have been out there on the scene. Things seem to seem to be clearing up. We can get that camera to move in a little bit uh, right now, though. Traffic is moving, but very slowly through that spot. Again, flashing lights mean that this, these lanes of traffic again are blocked off, but it does appear that there could be a tow truck out there working to clear things up. So maybe we'll see this wrapping up by morning rush, but we are seeing things slowing down 410 southbound at Old Pearsall Road. Not the only problem spot, unfortunately. As I mentioned, that drive over here, 410 southbound at WW White, a second crash has been reported. I'd say this Monday is off to a busy start as we get that wider look at the map at 617. You can see we still have a few stalls out there, so you've got to drive carefully. It's been a busy morning, but we haven't had a chance to look at those inbound times if you're traveling into San Antonio this morning. No delays. Thankfully, this is our green lining, <laughs> so we're not seeing any slowdowns if you are going to be traveling into the downtown San Antonio area from any of our neighboring communities, but the big problem spot is going to be here. That deadly crash It involved an 18 wheeler and an SUV. You got to drive carefully this morning, but Justin, I've been seeing some of those trans guide cameras that have been shaking a lot this morning. Yeah, gusty winds, colder temperatures, big storm system moving across the country, and we're feeling it here. The temperatures have dropped off dramatically from where they were yesterday. Let's look at the big picture here, and you can see this storm system stretching from basically the Rio Grande all the way up to the Great Lakes. And out ahead of it, rain, thunderstorms, severe weather. We've got tornado watch boxes across parts of uh, Mississippi, across Tennessee and Kentucky, then snow on the back side of it. Unfortunately for those folks in Iowa that got hit by the tornado, snow now moving in. For us, just a few rain showers and some cooler temperatures, as I said, that cold air driving south as we speak. And the numbers, well, they're chilly. 30 in Abilene, 27 right now. Midland, 21, Lubbock. That colder air now. Uh, pushing into South Texas, it is 49 in San Antonio, 54 Catula, 53 Beeville, low 40s in the Hill Country, 41 right now in Junction. And the satellite, you know, well, the radar picture, I should say, shows that we've got a few clouds, a uh, few showers working through, uh, moving south to north. Nothing that's very heavy. We had some showers earlier here in San Antonio, but the uh, shower activity is starting to wind down some. And I think by the time we get into the lunch hour, the rain will basically move out of here. Here's the scene outside. Cloudy skies and 49 degrees. Northerly winds at 23. That makes it feel all that much colder. 46 at Canyon Lake, 49 New Braunfels, 43 Comfort, 44 in Bandera. And then you have 50s 
uh, along uh, the southern part of Bear County and south. And 53 Del Rio, 53 in Uvalde. And there's a look at the wind gusts, close to 40 miles per hour here in San Antonio. So if you got the trash can out this morning, it's probably blowing around a little bit. These winds are going to calm some this afternoon, but it'll still be breezy even into the afternoon. And there is the wind chill. Now 42 is what it feels like here in town. It feels like 33 in Kerrville. It is definitely jacket weather and it stays that way. Most of the day temperatures do not warm up much. 47 noontime and by the afternoon. With a little bit of sun, we'll push those temperatures into the low 50s here in San Antonio. Colder as you go east because the clouds hold on. 45 in Gonzales, warmer out west where there's more sun. 68 in Del Rio, 59 the forecast high in Uvalde. There's a look at the cloud cover and yes, the clouds hold out to the east with some clearing for the western part of our viewing area. As we get into tonight, clouds fill right back in. We'll have a chance for showers tomorrow morning, so the commute could be a little bit damp on your Tuesday. By midday tomorrow, the rain moves out again and we get some clearing out west, but the clouds probably hold here around San Antonio and that will keep temperatures down. We'll be on an absolute roller coaster ride this week. It is chilly today, even colder tomorrow, 54 high, but then temperatures jump up. We're close to 80 by Thursday before another front comes through and knocks those temperatures back down again. This one looks pretty strong as we get into Friday. And looking at seven day forecast here, 30% chance of showers tomorrow, 50, 66 Wednesday, as we said, lots of sun Wednesday and Thursday, but that, that front uh, will likely knock temperatures back down into the forties by Friday afternoon with windy conditions, maybe a few showers too. And Saturday, Sunday morning will probably be near freezing here in town. Obviously in the hill country, we will see a freeze both Saturday and Sunday morning. The afternoons will be nice. But the uh, mornings over the weekend will be awful chilly, guys. Well, there's a lot going on in that forecast. Yes, I'm glad you had all the nice graphics to point that out. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Got it. And the upcoming time change, folks. Mm. What are you going to do? 621, about 48 degrees. And this morning, moviegoers are buzzing about the new Batman. We're going to let you know how much it raked in and if it's living up to the hype. People everywhere living with type 2 diabetes are waking up to what's possible with Rebelsis. The majority of people taking Rebelsis lowered their blood sugar and reached an A1C of less than 7. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. Wake up to the possibility of lower A1C with Rebelsis. You may pay as little as $10 for up to a three-month prescription. Ask your healthcare provider about Rebelsis today. When that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. The Batman scored the top spot at the weekend box office by a long shot, brought in $128.5 million. That's easily the best debut of the year, and second only to Spider Man No Way Home for the best opening since the COVID pandemic began. And I'm excited about our executive producer's review on the movie. So she is a movie junkie, Joy is. And so you know she has already seen this one and she has a lot of thoughts about it. She says she had mixed feelings going in, but it exceeded her expectations and says it was worth the hype. She felt like the new cast does a good job bringing new life to this twist on a dark tale. So Joy gives it four out of five bats. All right, back to work, Joy. Now speaking of bats, <laughs> a live one caused a ruckus at an Austin movie theater Friday. It turns out a guest brought in a bat as a prank during a showing of the Batman. After staff realized the live thing was wandering around the theater, they stopped the movie and tried to catch it. Animal control was called in to help. The theater offered refunds to viewers who wanted to leave, but most chose to stay. We have the video on KSAD.com. No word of amateur bat catcher Manu Ginobili 
was in the crowd. <laughs> they called him, or or uh, the coyote, maybe. Or the coyote. Yes, yes. they needed the help from San Antonio. Mm -hmm. 625, about 48 degrees. And we have a lot more heading your way in our next half hour, including a warning from CPS Energy, what they're saying about scammers cloning their numbers and what you need to do. And after the break, crews are investigating a crash. Driver killed slamming into the back of an 18-wheeler on a San Antonio freeway. We are staying on top of this. Sarah Costa standing by with an update. And again, taking a look out at the traffic caused by that wreck at Loop 410 at Old Parasol Road. We'll be checking back with Stephen Cavazos. Let's go outside with live cam. Can you believe it? It was like 80, 81 degrees yesterday. <laughs> Look at the temperature right now. You are not seeing things. We didn't transpose the numbers for fun this morning. It's 48 degrees out at San Antonio International Airport. And Justin says we might see the sun later on today. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 7th. Happy Monday. Happy spring break for a lot of you, although it felt like spring break yesterday and not so much this morning. Let's cold. see. The seesaw weather continues throughout the entire spring break week, week and we know other folks are off next week. Yeah, and next week's maybe looking a little bit warmer for looking way ahead, but mm -hmm. this week's going to feature a lot of ups and downs. Today, tomorrow, it's going to be chilly. I, it, it may catch you off guard. Don't let it. Grab the coat this morning because temperatures are still tumbling. We're at 48 degrees, 49 right now, 41 Waco, 30 Abilene, 21 Lubbock. Gives you an idea of how cold this air mass is. There are teens right now in the Texas Panhandle and this cold air is starting to settle into our area. 53 Del Rio, it is 44 right now in Austin, even down towards Victoria and Beeville. We are now in the low 50s, but that front making its way through. 24 hour temperature change, we're down 20 degrees from where we were 24 hours ago. This is going to be a big change today. And not only are we seeing the cooler air, we're seeing a few showers and gusty winds too. Live radar shows uh, we have a few light sprinkly showers up around Kerrville out towards uh, Lakey as well, but not much here around San Antonio. We did see a little bit of rain earlier. Didn't amount to much. I don't think we even saw measurable rain here in town, more or less just a trace. Uh, and we're not expecting a lot. Most of those showers are going to move east by lunchtime. The other big story, the wind gusts gusting now close to 40 here in San Antonio. Those gusty north winds make it feel even colder. Wind chills at this hour are now in the 30s. Forecast calls for clouds to stick around through the lunch hour. There may be a little bit of sun this afternoon, enough to boost temperatures up close to 53 degrees, but that's it. So a very, very different day from yesterday. And tomorrow has the potential to be even colder with another chance for rain. We'll talk more about that here in just a bit. Let's get over to Stephen now with the latest on your traffic authority. Not looking good here, Justin. A huge stretch of vehicles are being seen here off of 410 at Old Pearsall. Just got off the phone with our friends over at Transguide. What we were able to learn, this is not the crash we told you about or that we've been informing you about earlier in the morning. This is a separate incident, and you can see it is causing issues right there at the same spot where that other crash did happen earlier this morning, that deadly crash that involved an 18-wheeler and an SUV. Sarah Costa will have more on that in just a moment, but this situation is definitely causing a mess for drivers. Again, a separate situation that we're going to watch closely, but it doesn't look like this is the place to be right now. You can see that we are seeing more of the impact in the southbound lanes of 410, not causing issue in the northbound lanes, but things can change as we inch closer to morning rush hour. Watch out there. You also got to watch out here because we still have this crash on 410 southbound at WW White Road. So it's not been a good morning to be out on these specific areas, but the overall look at the map does show that we're still in decent shape. Thankfully, other areas aren't being aren't being uh, impacted by crashes or slowdowns, but this is definitely going to cause issues for drivers. Sarah Acosta has been live off of 410 throughout the morning. Sarah, people there just can't catch a break. Yeah, and Stephen, it actually makes sense what you just said, having a separate incident near P the Pearsall exit in Loop 410, because we saw that incident, that the deadly incident that happened, uh, they cleared about 10 minutes ago, but I was wondering why they hadn't opened the southbound lanes of 410 yet. So what you said about a separate incident actually makes sense. But what happened earlier this morning around 345 was a deadly crash. We want to show you the video, uh, that horrific video from earlier this morning. You can see a damaged SUV. Uh, what police say is around 345 this morning. The call originally came out as a driver pinned underneath an 18 wheeler. When police arrived at the crash, they determined the driver did not survive and had already died. Police say the 18 wheeler was pulled over onto the side of the highway with his emergency lights on when the driver of the SUV slammed into the back of it. 
that crash taking off the whole front of the SUV. Police say the driver who died is a male, but they didn't give an age or a name. The driver of the 18-wheeler was okay and not injured. Police did say that speed was likely a factor in this crash. They didn't say if alcohol or drugs were also a factor in this crash. Um, but again, that, that scene is clear here uh, at Loop 410 southbound lanes, but they still have not opened those lanes from a separate incident that Stephen was talking about. Live from the southwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Need this morning, an active silver alert is in effect this morning for a missing man from the Houston area. Officials in Harris County are looking for 81-year-old Samuel Lee Johnson. He was last seen around 4.30 yesterday in the town of Cypress. He's about six feet tall. He has brown eyes and gray hair. He was last seen wearing a tan jacket and khaki pants. Johnson was last seen in a silver 2007 Hyundai Sonata with Texas license plate BZ3G674. And law enforcement officials believe this senior citizen's disappearance poses a credible threat to his own health and safety. If you have any idea where he might be, you're asked to call 281-376-3472. Back here at home, instead of starting his first day of work at the Bear County Jail today, this man was instead booked into jail. 20-year-old Alucard Harris was wanted for online solicitation of a minor with intent for sexual contact. He was arrested over the weekend and supposed to begin working as a temporary jailer today. Bear County deputies were called to a home for an outcry of sexual assault involving a mi minor. Upon further investigation, the victim identified Harris through Snapchat, saying that is where he uh, authorities tried to talk with her. Harris's bond set for $100,000. CPS Energy is warning customers of scammers calling and asking for payments. If you receive a call that appears to be from CPS Energy and the caller tells you to dial another number and make a payment, just hang up. CPS has received several reports from callers about spoof numbers calling them. If you receive one of these calls, CPS Energy urges customers to record the phone number the person is telling you to call, hang up, and report it. Residential customers can report the scam. Calls at 210-353-2222 and commercial customers should dial 210-353-3333. Over to the UK now in North Wales, a 29 year old personal trainer and father two dead this morning after reports saying he accidentally overdosed on caffeine powder as strong as 200 cups of coffee. According to BBC, Thomas Mansfield purchased the packet of caffeine powder back in January to make drinks. Normally he would measure the caffeine powder on a digital scale, but this time he miscalculated the dosage. Shortly after consuming the drink, he started complaining of a rapid heartbeat he went to lie down and began foaming at the mouth. He later died at a hospital. You can read this full story on KSAT.com. And the world is on the verge of recording its six millionth official COVID-19 death. Another tragic reminder about the deadliness of the pandemic, even as mass mandates are dropping. Travel is resuming and businesses are reopening around the globe. Remote Pacific Islands are just now grappling with their first outbreaks. Hong Kong is battling its worst outbreak in clinging to mainland China's zero COVID strategy. Eastern Europeans battling a spike in deaths are now facing a surge of refugees from war-torn Ukraine. And the United States is nearing the mark of 1 million deaths on its own. Third round of talks between Ukraine and Russia is scheduled for today. According to negotiators, this comes as the UN says more than 1.5 million Ukrainians have fled the country in fear for their lives. CNN's John Lawrence reports. As Ukrainian National Police Special Forces join the military and even ordinary citizens to protect our country, President Volodymyr Zelensky accuses Russia of deliberate murder after the shelling of Ukrainian territories. It seems it is not enough for the Russian troops, not enough ruined destinies, crippled lives. They want to kill more. Russia has fired around 600 missiles since the start of the invasion, according to a senior U.S. defense official, and has roughly 95 percent of its amassed combat power in Ukraine. The aggressor's audacity is a clear signal to the West that sanctions imposed against Russia are not enough. The Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights says more than 360 civilians have been killed since military action began. My boyfriend died here, my aunt, my cousin, my grandmother, 
my sister's husband and a friend that stayed with us. And Western officials expect Russia will increase the strikes, putting the lives of more civilians at risk. Sadly and tragically, I think this is uh, this war is going to get far worse uh, before it gets better. On Sunday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced the House plans to pass $10 billion in emergency aid to Ukraine, adding that work is underway to ban Russian energy imports. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Back here at home, a San Antonio, San Antonio family, rather, who adopted six children from Ukraine, remembering the man who made it all possible after he was killed in the war. Stephanie Barnett says her family wouldn't have been complete if it was not for Serge Lev Zevlever. He was a dual U.S. and Ukrainian citizen and had a passion for helping orphans with special needs find loving homes. When war broke out in his home country, not fought, fought only not only to defend the land, but also for the kids, Barnett says Zev Lever was killed last Saturday. Our children would not be here, and all of the other children would not be here because of Surge. This man, how, what a hero, he gave his life. You know, he literally, he laid his life down. Stephanie says she's heartbroken over his death, but there's a silver lining. Zeb Lever's story is being shared on social media over and over, and it's putting a spotlight on international adoptions of children with special needs. Right now, 640, about 48 degrees. And you might want to consider a bowl of cereal for breakfast this morning, and that's because today is National Cereal Day. Ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you about the most popular cereals both around the country and here in Texas. And welcome back at 644. So today is National Cereal Day. And even though Frosted Flakes are great, <laughs> they are not the number one cereal people look for. The data science team at global e-commerce management company Pattern tracked consumer demand on Amazon during every day of 2021 to determine which cereal was America's favorite. So before we get to the top five, here's some interesting facts. According to Pattern, weekly demand for Lucky Charms is highest the week before St. Patrick's Day, up 96% compared to the average of the rest of the year. That's an indicator that consumers enjoy celebrating the holiday with the leprechaun inspired cereal. And also the week of Christmas seems to be when people enjoy the snap crackle pop of Rice Krispies when the cereal sees a 59% increase in weekly demand. It's likely due to the popularity of baking Rice Krispie treats for family and friends. That's exactly what it is. I think so. And now to the top five, Honey Nut Cheerios starts us off at number five, followed by Lucky Charms at four, Frosted Flakes at three, and Rice Krispies at number two. And the most popular cereal in the U.S., Cinnamon Toast Crunch, just barely beating out Rice Krispies. I can see that. And as for our neck of the whiz, can you guess which cereal Texas likes the most? So according to Google Trends at Zipia.com, Lone Star State really likes Fruit Loops. And we're not alone. The data shows that at least eight other states call Fruit Loops their favor a favorite rather as well. I want to know where my Captain Crunch are. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know. I like I kinda like all of them, but I I can see the Fruit Loops thing. That's a favorite for my my daughter. So we could see that trend. There you go. Yeah. Look like little donuts. <laughs> Let's check on traffic at 645. Apple Jacks for me. Ah, I, I like, like those Apple too. Jacks. That was great. Yeah, I haven't had that in a while. But uh, if you are having your bowl of cereal at home and watching traffic, good news is we have some progress out in some of those problem spots we told you about earlier this morning. 37 at Hackberry, 410 at Old Pearsall. Now that had been a problem spot throughout the entire show. Thankfully, it looks like things have cleared out. We did have, a, unfortunately, a deadly crash that involved a SUV and an 18-wheeler. But then there was a second crash that popped up after that cleared. Both have now wrapped up and you can see those southbound lanes are improving. So a little bit of a slowdown there still. But again, that's an improvement from what we saw earlier this morning. We still have this crash actually looks like may have just cleared off of 410 South at a W W White just moments ago. So some good news. Bird's eye view of the map. Now that we are in morning rush, we do see more stalls that are popping up. So you got to make sure you're driving carefully out there, especially when you see a stranded motorist. So watch out there uh, traveling into San Antonio. No delays from any of our neighboring communities, but it does appear if you're coming in from southbound, those southbound lanes on 35 from New Bronzeville, you can expect a 42 minute drive right now. So just prepare for some slowdowns. So we are in that time when people will get out on the roadways. So just remember to drive safe and we'll continue to give you those updates right here on GMSA guys.
Thank you, sir. Gray and Cooler here is Justin with what to expect today. Yeah. What a change. What a change. We had that cold front come through last night. It'll be colder and windy today. And as we get into tomorrow, even cooler. Maybe a chance for some showers to tomorrow morning after a few showers uh, this morning. Right now we're seeing a little bit on radar. Rest of the week, another front on Friday. So we're going to get uh, hit by some cooler air twice here during uh, during this week uh, outside. We've got temperatures sitting at 49 degrees at the airport. 54 Stinson 51 Kelly in 50 right now at Randolph. Those winds really gusting uh, right now north at 23 miles per hour, but gusting higher than that close to 40 miles per hour in some cases. And I mentioned some of those showers out there. Everything we're seeing today is light, but we are detecting some light showers around Kerrville at this hour just to the east of Lake E. Not much here around San Antonio, just cloudy skies for us. Wind gusts close to 40 miles per hour, as I said, here in town, 33 mile per hour wind gust in New Braunfels, gusting to 32 right now in Cotula out of the north and temperatures starting to come down. So these are the wind chill values. This is what it feels like when you factor in those gusty winds. It feels like 42 in New Braunfels, feels like 42 here in San Antonio, and it feels like 34 right now in Kerrville. So it's going to be a chilly day for sure. And you look at the air temperatures, they're all, all these numbers continue to come down. 42 is what uh, the air temperature is there in Kerrville, 52 in Uvalde, 54 right now in Katua. And as we zoom out some, you can see just how cold this air mass is. It is 21 right now in Lubbock, 18 in Amarillo. And the uh, rain out ahead of the front is a little heavier as you get up to the north and east. That's where there is actually severe weather this morning across parts of Mississippi and Tennessee and even detecting a little bit of light wintry weather on the back side of this across northeast Texas. No accumulations or anything like that. But it just goes to show you that this is uh, sort of winter's, I don't want to say last gasp, because we have some more headed our way, some more cold air headed our way by the end of the week, but uh, it shows you that winter is still here for sure. Some snow on the back side of this system that stretches all the way from the Great Lakes down to the Rio Grande, and some pretty heavy snow, in fact, for places like Chicago and Milwaukee this morning. Rest of today, temperatures in the 40s for the first half of the day, and then warming up a little bit this afternoon with some peaks of sun up to 53. Tomorrow, uh, we'll see clouds start to increase overnight and then maybe a few showers early in the day on Tuesday, about a 30% chance. Clouds hold on most of the day tomorrow with just a little bit of clearing out west. That's going to keep temperatures cool. We'll go 53 degrees today, 50 tomorrow with a 30% chance of rain mainly in the morning. Wednesday morning, we're down to 38, but we do rebound. Wednesday and Thursday look nice, minus a little bit of fog Thursday morning. And then there's that second front I was talking about. It'll knock temperatures potentially down into the 40s by Friday afternoon with windy conditions. We do see some nice temperatures over the weekend, but the, the morning lows will be the big story both Saturday and Sunday, close to freezing here in San Antonio, if not touching freezing, especially Saturday morning. What the what? I know, it's crazy for March, <laughs> but I do like how you use the word rebound in your rebound. forecast. Rebound, well, <laughs> there'll be a lot of rebounding. It's, it's uh, one of those type forecasts that'll keep you on your toes. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Justin. Our San Antonio Spurs have just 18 games left in the regular season, and they're running out of time to make a push for the playoffs. Now, the Spurs do have a fighting chance to make the postseason. That's because they have managed to put three and a half games between themselves and the Pelicans, who now sit at 10th place in the West and currently on the play-in position. At the same time, head coach Greg Popovich still two games out of making NBA history for the most wins. It's after the Spurs suffered their fourth straight loss. Simon Charlotte on Saturday night. They've not won a game since completing their eight game rodeo road trip. So up next Spurs are home for a while. They're taking on the Lakers tonight starting at 730. Lakers have won three of their last 10 games and LeBron James is literally carrying that team right now. On Wednesday, the Spurs welcome the Raptors to the AT&T Center. Then the Jazz are in town on Friday, followed by the Pacers coming up on Saturday. Go Spurs go. Yes, hoping for those wins at home. Time now 651 and 48 degrees for now. Ladies, listen up. Tomorrow on GMSA, eight foods that can really boost your health and what you need to think about before you go grocery shopping. Man, we already told you before you head out, out the door this morning, one thing to think about is grabbing that jacket. It's going to be a cool day all day. Looks like the sun is still trying to peek through those clouds here. You're watching GMSA. We're back after this. 
A man is dead after slamming his SUV into the back of an 18 wheeler early this morning on Loop 410 on the city southwest side. Good morning. I'm Sarah Costa. Police say they got the call around 345 this morning to the southbound lanes of Loop 410 and Pearsall Road. The when police arrived to the crash, they determined the driver did not survive and had already died. Police say the 18 wheeler was pulled over onto the side of the highway with his emergency lights on when the driver of the SUV slammed into the back of it. Police say the driver who died is a male, but they didn't give a name or an age. Now, the driver of the 18 wheeler was not injured and the scene has since been cleared just before 630 this morning from the southwest side. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Terrible scene. Thank you so much, Sarah. Let's go ahead and take a look at TransGuy. Thankfully, that crash did clear out and traffic is moving through 410. And that's what we're seeing. Traffic moving through I-10. A lot of these shots at TransGuy aren't showing problems, but bird's eye view of the map shows stall seem to be the main issue at this hour. So check those vehicles. Keep in mind, slowdowns off 35 southbound. We're seeing more of those stalls off of I-10. So we'll watch them closely. Big delay, though, right now, 49 minutes traveling in southbound from 35 in New Braunfels. Other than that, the roads are fine, but we'll watch things closely, Justin. A cold front moved through overnight that brought some much cooler temperatures. We were in the 80s yesterday. We're going to struggle to get out of the 40s today. Cloudy skies to start. Temperatures dip a little bit by lunchtime, but then build back into the low 50s this afternoon with gusty winds and a cool day tomorrow, too, with a chance of rain. Guys, that's a wrap. All right. Thank you guys for joining us and enjoy this cool spring break. We'll see you back here at 9.